Hi, and welcome to our video tutorial series on Microsoft Word 2010. In this video, I want to start talking about some of the character formatting options that are inside of Word. Now, I'm on the Home tab of the ribbon, and you're going to see I have a font section here. This font section contains the commands that are most frequently used for modifying character formatting. For example, I could highlight Office Memo here, and I could change the font that I'm using to something different. I could change the size right here to something different. I can apply bold, italic, or underline items. Or I can do a combination of them. I can click on both bold and italic. Or I can turn them off. I'm going to go ahead and leave that bold. You also have a couple of buttons here that will progressively increment your font size up or down. That way you can kind of see what's going on as you modify the font size. And I really like this particular tool. Here we have an option to change case. And I'm going to go ahead and click that drop down. Sentence case capitalizes the first letter of a sentence. Lowercase will convert everything into lowercase. Uppercase will make everything uppercase. Capitalize each word is usually called title case. And then you have toggle case, which will just switch the two. I'm going to go ahead and select uppercase. And there I have the title for my document. You also have some other buttons here. I can control the color of the item. So maybe I'm going to make this like a, uh, a darker blue color. There we go. And you've got a highlighting tool here. You've got your superscript and subscript buttons for things like footnotes and um, atomic units. You also have strike through here. Now you're going to notice some of these buttons actually have drop downs on them. And whenever you see a drop down, you know you're going to get a menu that will give you a list of choices. Sometimes though the drop down is easy to miss, like on the underline button here. I can click that drop down and I can select all sorts of options for different underlines. I can choose the underline color. And I can even go into more underlines, which will bring me into a dialog box that will give me additional features. Now, there are obviously other character formatting options other than the ones you can just see right here on these buttons. And you can get to those by going to the font section and clicking this little icon in the lower right-hand corner of that section. And you're going to see that when I point at it, this tooltip comes up that's telling me that when I click that, or press Control D, there's a shortcut for this also, it will show the font dialog box. And I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And here's the font dialog box. It has all of my different character formatting options. And if you are familiar with Word 2003 or some older versions of Microsoft Word, this dialog box is going to be very familiar to you. And you can see here I can again change the font, the style, or the size. I can change the font color, set an underline, I'll do a thick underline here, and once I select an underline style, I can choose a color for the underline. I'm going to go ahead and select that color of orange. And then you have some different special effects here. Strike through, and again you'll see a preview of the way it's going to look down there, and double strike through. Superscript and subscript, again superscript, an example of that might be a footnote type character, and a subscript character would be something like the atomic units on a formula, like the 2 and H2O would be subscripted. Then you have some graphic effects here. I can put shadow on my item. I can outline, emboss, engrave. Emboss and engrave are very similar except for their positioning. And then I have some case options here. I can make things small caps or all caps. Small caps is when the lowercase letters appear as uppercase but are smaller. So I've got a number of different options here. And you can always play around with the options and see what they're going to look like down here. If I don't like what I've done, the easiest way to get out of it is just to click cancel. And you'll see my text wasn't affected. But I'll highlight that again and go back into this font dialog box. And now let's go look at the Advanced tab right up here. The Advanced tab will allow you to change the scale of the characters. 
And again, I'm going to go ahead and select 200% here, and you'll see what happens. The scale or the horizontal width of the characters was doubled there. And I'll change it back to 100%, and you'll see it goes back to normal. The spacing option here will allow you to expand or condense the spacing between your characters. I'm going to go ahead and select expanded, and I can choose the amount right here. I'm going to go ahead and say 3 pixels. I could use those arrows, but it will go up by tenth of a point. The position here will allow you to raise or lower the baseline of the text. And the baseline is that sort of invisible line that all the characters sit on. So if you want that baseline to go up or down, you can use the position option right here. And you can even adjust the spacing in between the fonts individually, the characters individually. Now, most of these char most of these options I don't recommend that anybody do because it's hard to use them and still have your text look professional. But sometimes for things like titles, changing the character spacing can help. So we'll see what that um, looks like there. And again, you always get a preview down here. And if you don't like what you're seeing, you want to drop all of your changes, you can always click Cancel. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and you'll see what's happened to my title there. Now, one final thing in the Format Font option. I have set as default here. And what this will allow you to do is change the default font and style for all new documents. Now, Word is set up that when you just take it right out of the box, the default font is Times New Roman 12 point. But let's say you prefer to use Arial 11 point. I'm going to go ahead and scroll up here and I'm going to find that Arial font. There's my Arial font. I'm again going to select regular, but I'm going to change the size to 11. I'm going to make sure that the color is always going to be black. And I won't set any of these other effects here. I'm going to go ahead and click Set as Default. When I do that, a warning is going to come up. And it's going to say, do you want to set the default font, the default, to Arial 11 point with the color of black for just this document or all documents that are based on the normal template? And the normal template is the basis for all your new blank documents. I'm going to say all documents based on this template. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. You'll see the default font changed in this document. And now if I go to the File menu, select New, and create a new blank document. we got blank document selected there, and I'll click Create. When I begin typing, you'll see that that document now has the new font inside of it.